The FAA is warning disorderly passengers they could lose TSA pre-check. How long they'd be suspended from quicker screening would depend on the seriousness of what they did and any history of violations. A lot of the tantrums we've seen have been over masks. Airlines still enforcing that mandate. This year alone, investigators launched over a thousand investigations. They saw 24 cases within the past week. There were 183 last year, all year. Of this year's nearly 5,800 unruly passenger reports, more than 4,000 of them were mask related. 84 new incidents happened in the last week. I want to bring in Sarah Nelson, the international president of the Association of Flight Attendants. Uh, Sarah, given all of the developments uh, with the pandemic increased travel numbers this holiday season, I'm just kind of wondering, how are you doing, you and your workforce? How y'all feeling? <laughs> it's pretty tough and flight attendants are feeling very beat up. They've been on the front lines of this pandemic for the last two years, so the stresses and strains are wearing. And people are not picking up uh, voluntary overtime hours at the rate they were pre-pandemic because they just can't stand to come to work that often. Um, so it, it has been really difficult and we're trying to just make it through. We negotiated some financial incentives for people to come to work over the holidays to help try to support the operation. And people are picking up those trips because of that, but it is really hard. Yeah, I bet. And I'm wondering if you think stripping TSA pre-check is going to be enough of a, a motivator for people to behave right. Well, look, I think it's great that the FAA and TSA are working together on this. Um, coordination between the agencies and the airports, airlines, and all of the stakeholders in aviation is really necessary in order to put layers of safety in place uh, to bring down the number of incidents happening here. And this is, a, this is another deterrent for people. But the reality is that TSA PreCheck is a risk-based security analysis, and we know more about those travelers. What we would know about anyone who we're denying this to is that they are high risk because of their activities previously. So mm. it, it is the right move. Uh, it's not going to be enough, but it is uh, it helps and it's the right move. And we need to keep moving, including a banned list uh, for travelers. People should lose the freedom of flight if they are acting out on a plane and they have been found guilty after an investigation. If I'm in the airport or on the airplane and somebody starts acting like a jerk to their fellow passengers or to the flight attendants, is it advisable to do something to be, you know, a good airplane citizen and try to respond to them with kindness to intervene in some way? Or is it just hands off, let the flight attendants deal with it? We really need people being good witnesses. So first and foremost, before you even come to the airport, understand that setting a tone of kindness looking out for a, a other people and offering help, getting to the airport early enough so that you're not stressed and adding to the anxiety there is going to be very helpful. If you see someone starting to act out, we really need you to alert someone in the airport, uh, whether that's a gate agent or another airline personnel or a flight crew that's coming by so that we can put some extra eyes on that and try to keep problems on the ground. And we really encourage you not to intervene yourself. We're trained in de-escalation. You may inadvertently give rise to the conflict. Only intervene if you see that there's an immediate threat of danger um, and otherwise call for help. I'm wondering if I can ask you about something else while we have a second, because it is potentially going to disrupt some logistics in the new year, and that could add to the strain and the stressors. Uh, when we start running 5G cell towers, there's some concern that they could interfere with radio altimeters on airplanes, which could interfere yeah. with autopilot and whatnot. And I know that that could sort of get in the way of whether or not some flights can go to an airport that's having bad weather. The FAA and the FCC see to, seem to sort of be over at an impasse over this. And I know you all are concerned it could disrupt schedules in the new year. Do you think we're going to get to a solution before January 5th? I do think we're going to get to a solution. Uh, first, we don't want to really test out whether or not something is safe on the flying public. So it's yeah. really important that we get together and make sure that it's safe. Um, there are discussions going on. This has been a little bit tenuous, but I got a report today that things are moving in the right direction. And we're looking at having some mitigation factors in place for these areas that are specific concerns, sharing uh, that information and technology between manufacturers and uh, telecom and having FCC and FAA talking together with uh, mediators who understand how the science works. So I, I am I am pretty confident that we're going to get to a solution here, but it's a really serious issue. And like I said, yeah, you just can't take any risk with safety.
Appreciate you not wanting us to be the guinea pigs, Sarah. That is <laughs> that is much appreciated. Uh, uh, for that reason and many more, uh, we will give you and any flight attendants on our flights on the way home this holiday season a smile, a thank you. They are under a lot of stress, and I appreciate you illustrating some of that for us tonight. Sarah Nelson, thank you. That makes all the, the difference. Association of Flight Attendants, thank you. Yes, happy yes, holidays. yes. Be good to people, and happy holidays to you, and happy new yeah. year.